I'm just gonna lay it out there. I messed up and I messed up big time. I had an opportunity of a lifetime and I blew it. If you stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you what I did and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes instead of your own. In case you didn't catch it from the title of the video, I'm talking about the Alone Show on History Channel. That's right, I got selected for season six of the Alone Show on History Channel. The problem is I didn't make it. I actually disqualified myself from the show. Now, uh, it wasn't so much me getting kicked out before it started as it was making mistakes that cost me, I believe, an opportunity of a lifetime to go on that show and to prove my, uh, my survival skills to the world and, and really to myself. And so um, what I wanna do is I wanna take a, a few minutes and I wanna just share with you from start to finish what I did, how I got noticed. For example, season six, there were about 20,000 people who applied. And out of 20,000, I was selected to go to boot camp and have an opportunity to compete for a spot on the show. Now, in case you don't know how it works, boot camp is just a very awesome and unique experience. Out of those who are selected to go to boot camp, 10 are selected to make it on the show. Okay. Now, I don't know if that's going to be true for season nine, but it was true for season one through season six. And so I want to talk about my process from start to finish. All right how I got noticed, because that's the big thing. I, when you have 20,000 email applicants a year, how in the world do you get noticed? So I wanna talk about how to get noticed, um, and then I wanna talk about uh, actually getting to boot camp, and I wanna talk about as much as I know about the show. Now, I, I wanna just, I wanna clarify. I am an absolute supporter of the show. I am not bitter. Okay, maybe I'm a little bitter, but I'm not all that bitter that I didn't make the show because I believe it was my fault, not their fault. The cast that they selected for season six, hands down, was the right cast to be selected. Now, I think I should have had a chance on that. I, I get it, like, but I'm, I'm biased right, towards myself and I think I could have done a great job on the show. But I just wanna say from the get-go, I 100% support the show, the producers, uh, the contestants, ITV, everybody involved in the whole process. So this is, this is not a, a bash alone, History Channel, anything like that. Um, yes, I was disappointed. Yes, I was in a lot of ways kind of heartbroken. I felt like I really missed out on an opportunity of lifetime. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna share with you um, mistakes I made along the way, uh, as well as the things I did that I feel like I did correctly in order to get a chance on the show. And that's really all you can hope for. You can hope for a chance on the show. And what I want to talk about goes far beyond honing your skills in order to make the show. Because it's important to have the skills in order to survive. All right, they look for that 100% hands down. You have to be confident and competent in the woods in order to even be considered for the show. Here's what I did wrong. I applied when they weren't even casting for the show. Now, I had no idea the timeline, the time frame. Early on, season one, season two, season three, I don't know how people figured it out. They must have been a part of, you know, some sort of communities that I didn't know. And so I just threw out the application. They weren't even casting at that point. Don't bother sending out a video when they're not casting. Nobody's checking the inbox. Nobody's looking for talent at that time. They're focused on other things. The good news is right now, at the time this video is coming out, they're casting. Uh, in fact, a couple weeks, they began casting for Alone Show season nine, okay? So right now is the perfect time to take all this information to heart and hopefully give yourself an opportunity to make the show. I had no clue what I was doing and number two, um, I did not follow their instructions all right, as to what information to provide. I saw all the behind the scenes stuff they did for season one and season two, and I tried to recreate a polished version of that to present to them of who I was. That wasn't even what they requested 
in the first place. They wanted me to, to, to send an email describing who I am and what I've done. I thought video would be great, but here's the thing. If you're going through 20,000 emails, you do not have time to watch four minute videos, four and a half minute videos from every contestant that applies, okay? Here's the other thing. Uh, they are very secretive as to who they are casting. They don't really want the whole world to know. Part of the, part of the expectation or part of the, the intrigue leading up to the show is we don't know who the contestants are. They wanna build the characters. They, they, wanna, they wanna introduce us to the characters. So don't go on social media and try to get their attention via social media. It's not gonna work. In fact, it's gonna be a detriment to you getting on the show. Here's what you do. You find an appropriate time when they're casting and you reach out to the casting department. Don't embellish your abilities. Don't try to become someone you're not. Be yourself. If you're confident and you're competent in the woods, you have a shot to be on History Channel Alone Show. You need to focus on your story and why your story can help their show. And at the end of the day, they are looking for a dynamic group of people that fit together, that, that complement and that differ from one another. It is a real, legit survival show, but they're trying to tell a story at the same time. So, number one, be yourself, okay? Number two, apply at the right time. Number three, you have to do something to get their attention. I have no connections to the bushcraft or survival community. I have no relationship to anybody who has ever been on the show. Now I've developed some friendships and I've gotten to know some people and that's great. Maybe it'll give me a leg up for something in the future. I don't know. I had been applying since season three, okay? Or really leading into season four. And I never got a call back. I never got notified. I never even got a single response to the fact that they had seen my email. And what I discovered is that they probably never saw my email. I think I just said, hey, I'm interested in applying as the subject title. Probably everybody and their brother. Out of 20,000 applicants, probably 19,000 of them say, I want to be on your show. Okay. So I did something really unique and really creative uh, and I grabbed the attention of the Alone Show on History Channel. So what I did is I sent an email with a subject line, Gretchen Palick says, I'm the one you're looking for. Those of you who are watching, you're like, who the heck is Gretchen Palick? All right, she's not even connected with the show. But from my understanding, she was the one who came up with the idea behind the show. Okay, now whether or not it was her by herself or a team of people or whatever, I don't know. In season six, she wasn't a part of the Alone Show History Channel. Um, but the, the casting agent who was under her got my email. She came back from lunch. It popped up exactly, you know, when she sat down at her computer and it got her attention because she's like, Gretchen Palick, okay, if this is true, I better check into this because she's my boss. All right, so I just did some history. Now, I, I don't know if that's how anybody else got noticed or whatever. You can come up with a way better subject line than that. Be creative. But the other thing is send the email at the right time. Not just when they're casting, but do some research into when people actually read emails, okay? Mondays and Fridays are horrible days to send emails, all right? Now, I don't know, maybe you sent yours on Monday and Friday and it worked out, awesome. But um, I strategically sent it at the right time with a catchy subject line as best as I could do as I did research into the company, I did research into what they're looking for, and so I included all that. Now, I also edited my casting submission down. I have never once been outside and just gotten to the point where I, I just need to be back.
I love my wife, I love my kids, but there's that feeling, that sense that, man, there's just more. And I just wonder how long could I actually last? How long could I survive? So a little about me, as a kid, my parents were divorced, and so my mom, as a single mom, didn't have a lot of extra money. So we didn't take a lot of exotic vacations or anything like that. In fact, we just pretty much went camping, all we could afford. As I got a little bit older, I tried ice climbing and absolutely fell in love with it. Most of the climbs are pretty remote, and so I would spend a week out in the wilderness in the middle of the winter, climbing, hiking, exploring. After college, I spent a year living off-grid in a trailer with no electricity and no running water. And I spent quite a bit of time in the mountains in Colorado and other places that most people don't normally venture. The most alone that I've ever been was about 10 years ago. I went through a divorce. There was about six months where I was just absolutely alone. Lost my job, lost my family. I, I wanted to run away and just go to Alaska and start over. You know, I'm so glad I stuck around because through that, really learned that what doesn't kill you can actually make oh, you stronger. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, hey, good morning. It's 10.45 a.m. and I am just now getting up and around. I had a throbbing headache last night. It was pretty miserable. But it reminds me of a time I went hiking on the Appalachian Trail with my brother and sister. And we are going to do about 30 miles. And the night before, I woke up just with the flu bug. They all said, are you sure you want to do this? And my response to them was, I'm going to be miserable anyway. Why not be miserable doing something I love? All right? So that's my mentality. I've never eaten a stink bug with a fork before. In fact, I've never eaten a stink bug at all. So let's see what it tastes like. Ugh. Oh my word, they are, they are good. <laughs> that is surprisingly delicious. Now I included that with the description of who I am, where I've been, what I've done, and uh, but I felt like that helped me to get noticed. Getting noticed, I think, is one of the hardest parts of the whole process, but honestly, it does not matter if you can polish or edit video, okay? Don't, I thought that that was the key. I thought that was gonna be my claim to fame, that I can, I can shoot video, I can edit video, and I can survive in the woods, okay? They could care less about your camera experience, your editing ability. They've got professional people that will train you on how to do camera stuff. And thankfully, you don't even have to worry about editing, okay? That's a whole nother ball game. Don't worry if you don't have that skill. She only watched the first 15 seconds of the video, okay? She didn't even watch the whole thing before she called me. And so it really didn't matter that I had a two minute polished video, okay? Now, I, if you're gonna send something, keep it small, keep it short. Somehow they can see your personality online. So I got a call back and I tell you what, I was so nervous about that call, right? I, I like, I mean, I literally, it was, it was brutal, okay? Now, I don't interview well, typically. I've never gotten a job from an interview. I freeze up, I, I choke up, I, I don't even say what I wanna say. If I'm sitting here in front of the camera, talk all day long, right? If I'm, uh, if I'm trying to talk and do an interview, it just it doesn't work out. So I just kind of start my own stuff. That, that's, how I've, that's how I cope with that because I, I just choke up when it comes to interview. So, but here's the thing, just relax, be yourself. Don't try to prove to them that you're anything you're not. But, but I do wanna say this, it's important to be extra you. Okay, does that make sense? Don't be somebody else, don't copy somebody else, but you need to be you on steroids, okay? Because you're trying to make a good impression. Some of you are much better at interviewing than I am. All right, it just comes naturally or you've worked hard at it. So take all of those lessons that you've learned about uh, initial impression and things like that and you need to use those because it's really what it's about. It's about creating an initial impression. So um, I went through the phone interview. After the phone interview, they said, oh, we like you, but uh, we'll be in touch, okay? What does that mean, all right? It was a few weeks later 
and they said, hey, we really like you. We think you'd be great for our show. And uh, they talk you up, they get you really pumped about it. They say, we want to schedule a Skype interview. And so I did the Skype interview and I found a location, actually kind of outdoor. You want to you wanna be able to foot, put the, the, the best foot forward. So be thinking about it. Even before you have the opportunity for a Skype interview, what are you going to use as the backdrop? Okay, What are some things that you're going to talk about? What are some experiences that you've had that you want to describe? Now, they are so easy and they are so fun to talk to because they want to use to succeed as much as you want you to succeed okay their goal is to find and capture the best talent and put them in the best light possible for their show that's what they do that is their whole job so they talk you up and and if you listen to them you are the best candidate that they've ever talked to on the phone and it gives you a lot of confidence but they do that because they want you to know uh, that they're trying hard and uh, and so they do they try hard they they try to get you they, they don't put words in your mouth right you have to know what to say but it's super easy don't stress about that but again be yourself okay and then it becomes the waiting if you make it past the initial phone interview and then you get to the Skype interview right and then you don't hear anything for months Right? You might have somebody say, hey, we need to do a non-disclosure. You know, you might get somebody from a different department that's, hey, we need to, the legal department, we need to get this all taken care of. And I knew from past seasons that boot camp was coming up and I hadn't heard anything. All right? And then finally I get a call. Hey, we selected you for boot camp. Can you make it? Heck yeah, I can make it. So I went out to boot camp and that is really where the rubber hits the road. That's, you're here, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and this is where I messed up, okay? This is where I focused in all the wrong places. I went into boot camp unsure of myself, okay? I know, I can go out in the woods, I can survive, I've done extended trips, I've done crazy trips, I've, I've intentionally prepared myself for this kind of experience but I had no clue how I compared to the rest of the bushcraft survival adventure world, okay? And so I spent the first part of the week kind of trying to compare myself and, and, and feeling a little bit intimidated by everybody that's around there. And it, I, I began to realize like, man, I do fit in this group of people, all right? Not to be cocky, not to be arrogant, but like, okay, I do fit. I focused so heavily on trying to prove myself as a survivalist that I think I missed out on what I really needed to focus on, which was communicating my story, really my backstory, and why including me on the show would benefit not only me, but also the show. And that's where I fell on my face. From a skills perspective, I believe that I had the best shelter of anyone at boot camp. Okay? From a skills perspective, I got a bow drill fire going faster than anyone ever in the history of a lone boot camp. In fact, the survival instructor said, hey, we'll be back in a few minutes. And before they got back, Within 15 or 20 minutes, I had a bow drill fire going. In fact, I knew that they, they weren't around and I needed somebody to witness it. So I grabbed a camera and I filmed myself making a bow drill fire faster than anyone else. And then I went around helping everybody else trying to do a bow drill fire. Now, I, that doesn't give away too much of the thing. Like you've seen that in past boot camp, you know, behind the scenes, everybody trying to do fire, you know, shelters. That's all. I, I'm not going to go in depth as to what happened at boot camp, okay? I feel like that that's just would be inappropriate and you guys would would try to take that and, and specifically prepare for that. Here's what I wanna say. From a skills perspective, I should have been chosen. And this is not just from me, this is from all the contestants who actually made the show. From a performance perspective, in terms of my survival skills, I should have made the show. If, if that's what they look for, for qualifying for the show, I should have made the show hands down. The problem is they didn't. Now, here's what they said. They says, man, 
you remind me a lot of Zachary Fowler, the guy who won season three. Of course, I know who Zachary Fowler is, okay? So, so I'm like, that makes me feel good, all right? Because he's a cool guy. He knows his stuff, right? He's super creative. And so um, I took that as a compliment, all right? And so I, I feel like I tried to be Justin Van Ferrari with a hint of Zachary Fowler. Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Justin Fowler, and this is my Duck Hunter 3000 and one. Now I'm also a pastor, okay? And so Dave McIntyre from who won season two, he was a he he was like a pastor missionary, right? His faith was huge for him, and so I thought I'm gonna kind of be Justin Van Ferrari, but I'm gonna build in elements of Dave McIntyre. Hey guys, I'm Justin McIntyre, and why would I want to go home? I'm eating fish and crab every day. And elements of Zachary Fowler, because somebody said, one of the producers said, hey, you kind of remind me of Zachary Fowler. I'm like, I'm a shoe in I got the Bodril Fire. I got the best shelter at boot camp. I remind him of Zachary Fowler. I remind him, you know, elements of, of Dave McIntyre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really play into that. Okay, the problem is, the problem is they weren't looking for another Dave McIntyre. They weren't looking for another Zachary Fowler. They were looking for somebody new, okay? Don't try to be someone else. I grabbed a hold of that and I tried. It wasn't that I was trying to be fake, but I was trying to convince them I was just like the two guys who had won the previous two seasons. They don't want another version of the two guys who won the previous seasons coming to the next season. All right, so, so you guys, be yourself, okay? Don't try to be someone you're not. Don't focus on survival skills, all right? If you don't have the skills right now to go in the woods, don't apply for the show, okay? And I know everybody thinks they have the skills to make it on the show. Here's the skills that you need to have, okay? And this is something that I have been developing over the last couple of years because I realized I'm up a creek when it comes to this. Food, okay. No, no other skills are, need. I mean, you need to have skills. You need to have fire. You need to know what you're doing out in the woods. If you don't have food, if you can't acquire food in various situations and circumstances, you're not gonna last, all right? No matter what, you get on the show, great, you make the show, you're not gonna last if you don't know how to get food. How many times have we seen contestants get on the show? They know everything there is to know about bushcraft and survival, but they can't get food and they go home starving, all right? You need to figure out how to get food. This is about wilderness living. It's not really about wilderness survival. So you need to set yourself up. You need to figure out how to get food. I don't care, that, that is the top priority on the show. So there's a bonus, right? You get on the show, you need to figure out how to get food. Before you even apply, you need to figure out how to get food. If you want a chance to actually win whatever the prize is. If you make it to boot camp, right? If you are one of the finalists selected, right? And you know you have an opportunity of a lifetime. Use that opportunity to build connections with the people who are making decisions. Um, I loved hanging out with the other bushcrafters and survivalists. I, I made friends that I guarantee will last a lifetime. And it was so easy for me to, to connect with those guys because we're all crazy, okay? And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're crazy too. You go in there and you feel like you're looking around, you're like, who's my competition, right? Everybody's my competition. I need to prove that I'm better than everybody else. No, you don't need to prove that you're better than anyone else. You need to be you. At the end of the day, let the producers decide. But the producers can only make an educated decision based on what you display or, or how you go about doing it. I, I was trying to prove myself in terms of my wilderness and survival skills. When I sat down to, to talk with the people that were gonna make a decision and my the decision to whether or not to put me on the show was on the line and I, I focused on my ability to survive, right? At that point, it's obvious to everybody who has the skills in the woods. You need to focus on your story. I wish, to this day, I wish that I would have stepped back and said, you know what? 
I'm confident in my survival skills. I think everybody else is too. Here's my story. If I ever have a shot to do it again, that's the, the approach that I would take. Now, the people who made the show, they were skilled, they were qualified to be there, but everybody at a lone boot camp was skilled and qualified to be there. What's gonna set you apart is your story, okay? And unfortunately, some of you have better stories or maybe worse stories that actually make it better. Why should they choose you? How's it gonna benefit the show if they choose you, okay? Not just how is it gonna benefit you, how is it gonna benefit them? And, and honestly, that's, that's where I messed up. That's where you have an opportunity to do better. Be yourself, all right? Apply at the right time, figure out a way to get their attention, be patient, work with them, do what you need to do, hone your survival skills, but when you get there, it's less about survival and it's more about helping them see who you are and what value you bring to the alone and to History Channel and all that. So again, I am not bashing History Channel. As you can tell, I am supportive of history. I, I, think, I think they've done a great job. I think they have paved the way. They've created a whole new realm of, of possibility in terms of what people expect. Kudos, Gretchen, everybody else who's been a part of the alone, the whole process and the alone show and developing that. Thank you so much for such an awesome and entertaining uh, thing to have every summer. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope maybe you glean some things from this and I hope it gives you an opportunity to make it on the show. I hope you get the opportunity to be the greatest survivalist the world has ever seen. So, go get them. Basically take your item that you're tying around or if you're connecting two items, you know, you can put them together there. I'm going to have to slide this thing on the table. So Take it in, cross it, pinch it there. And then you're going to make that. You notice how that leaves a little loop there? Yep. So it's one time around, two times uh, around. I'm just going to have to uh, yeah, hold just hold it. That's fine. Effect. It's three times around, then up through the middle. Right. And use tiny little Y sticks and then you're to gonna hold it up. Bring, these, yeah. bring it through these two and over. And then you're gonna run the end through that, through that end. And then. If you hit video, what I'll do is I'll. Dress it up, mate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, boom. No matter how tight you get it, it's still easy to take off. Right? And he said basically it creates so much friction within the knot. Yeah. No, it's not easy to come off. Like oh, you're gonna, okay. this paracord is done. Okay. You will not, you, if you tighten this down fully, you will not be this. able to use this paracord yeah, ever yeah, again. But yeah. through this hole. At that point, you can take another this bite, stick or something and ratchet yep. this and down. Just keep ratcheting yep. it down. Do and it creates end. so much friction within the knot that it actually melts it oh, together. Wow. And is, is what he said. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you'll take that and just ratchet it. Yeah. And the wraps just keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter <laughs> yeah. and tighter. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So. Sweet.